2022 City Council meeting. Our invocation will be given by Elias Wilson, Community Development Specialist. Oh, it's Shirley Murdoch. All right. Very good. Thank you. So it'll be Shirley Murdoch, and she's a member of the Church of Jesus Christ Latter-day Saints, so Shirley will come up and do that. And then please remain standing for the invocation and for the Pledge of Allegiance. Our dear Father in heaven, we are gathered together tonight in the capacity of a city council meeting. We are so grateful to live in America where individual citizens are given the privilege and opportunity of electing the leaders and officials that will guide and direct the affairs of their city or their county or their government. And we give the gratitude for this privilege. And we are grateful that Dr. Candace, uh, Bridget McCandless, has been elected to the City Council and asked blessings upon her for guidance and direction. And uh, we're also mindful at this time of the family of Karen DeLucy for their loss of her as they go into the holiday season. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask thee to bless the mayor and each member of the council with guidance and discernment as they determine the laws, regulations, and things to be about to make Independence, Missouri, the best place to live. We love thee and give thee our gratitude for thy many blessings. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Do I pledge allegiance? I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag of the United, United States, States of America. Of America. Madam City Clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Sears. Here. Perkins. Here. Stewart. Here. Steinmeier. Here. Hobart. Here. Mayor Rowland. Here. Next, we have the I Star Award. Madam City Clerk. Bill number 22-820, a resolution recognizing James Pollock, Stormwater Superintendent with the Municipal Services Department as the I Star Award recipient for November 2022. Whereas the City Employee Recognition Program recognizes outstanding performance and exemplary acts of service by employees of the City of Independence. And whereas an employee committee selects I-STAR Independence Service and Teamwork Above Responsibilities Award recipient for exhibiting the qualities and ideals that best represent public service. And whereas the Employee Recognition Committee has selected James Pollock, Stormwater Superintendent with the Municipal Services Department as the Employee of the Month for November 2022.
And with no objections, I'm going to give Councilman Butter Fierce just a moment to recognize some Boy Scouts. Yes, I'm pleased to uh, let you uh, just take a look and introduce uh, Scouts from PAC 4383. Uh, that's East 39th Street Community of Christ Congregation. We have nine scouts with us tonight and seven leaders. They're working on their Arrow of Light badge, uh, which is the highest badge in Cub Scouting. So um, good job, fellas. Welcome, and, or ladies and, and gentlemen, I should say, and, and welcome. And we're uh, uh, really happy you're here tonight. And also, we need to, Madam City Clerk, have the presentation resolution approved. And so if you, uh, so can you please take the roll call for the resolution recognizing James Pollock for the I-Star Award. We'll need a motion in a second. I'd, so, I'd move to uh, approve. Second. Right. Councilmember Spheres? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Stewart? Yes. Steinmeier? Yes. Hobart? Yes. Mayor Roland? Yes. This brings us to the consent agenda. Are there any council members? Uh, well, Council Member Hobart, sorry. My apologies. Um, it's my fault. I would move to approve the reports and recommendations of the city manager. We have a motion. Any second? Second. Thank you. We've got a motion and a second. Any Mayor. council members wishing to pull any items off for separate consideration? Mr. Mayor. Please. 22821, please. 22821. And that's item number, which one is that? Under resolution number 22821. Okay, thanks. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Can you please uh, pull 22823? Okay. So two folks of, two council members have asked to pull 22821 and 228. 23, we'll pull those out. Any others for separate consideration? Hearing none, um, Madam City Clerk, please call the roll for the consent items, then we'll come back for the other two items that have been pulled out. Councilman Bruce Fierce? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Stewart? Yes. Steinmeier? Yes. Hobart? Yes. Mayor Roland? Yes. That brings us to 22821. Um, Councilman Burr? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just want to kind of give a, a little bit of background on why we are repealing, um, dissolving the on the roll committee. Not to go into long uh, history and to pull out the scrolls of, of what we were doing there with the beginning with the downtown redevelopment committee, which um, helped formulate, took 16 plans, put it into one plan um, to move the, the city forward in the northwest side of Independence with all the needs that we have. So fast forward uh, almost four years later, we have accomplished quite a bit of stuff. Um, within that downtown redevelopment report, uh, we have a $22 million development moving forward on 24 Highway from 291 to Wilson Road. Um, we have Inglewood who is moving forward with their uh, developments with Inglewood Arts. They have formulated a community improvement district which was recommended in the DRCC report. The um, Independence Square is moving forward and doing very well. We are having the downtown streetscape discussion that is still moving forward under design. Truman Connected, which is from Truman Library to the Truman Sports Complex, is under design. The Independent Square Association, or the Independent Square, has formulated and executing their community improvement district, which was recommended in the DRCC report. Uh, Fairmont, working with the uh, Community Service League and the other stakeholders there, we are in the beginning stages of formulating a community improvement district there. So. A lot of good stuff. I want to say a big thank you to uh, the Chamber of Commerce and, and the EDC who were uh, very much involved. Dan O'Neill uh, represented the EDC. Lori Dean Wiley represented the Chamber of Commerce as a committee person. Councilman Hobart was also sitting on the, the committee there with me. And Jody Krantz and uh, all the city staff over, over the past few years that have kind of helped set the, the pace in, in the stage. So moving forward with this being dissolved, we're going to work directly with the stakeholders, um, city staff, and the uh, stakeholders of those uh, projects that are still out there moving. So with that, I move for approval of 22821. Okay. Second. Thank you. 
Any further discussion? Hearing none, Madam City Clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Spears? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Stewart? Yes. Steinmeier? Yes. Hobart? Yes. Mayor Rowland? Yes. That brings us to 22A23. Councilmember? Mr. City Manager, can you go and over you why we're asking for this moratorium? Yes, sir. Um, council member and uh, mayor and other members of the council, uh, as you know, there's been a few speakers um, over the past several months and weeks who have come to address the city council about um, short-term rentals. Sometimes those are known as Airbnbs or VRBO or any other number of platforms. Several years ago, the city did adopt um, unified development ordinance restrictions on time, place, and manner operations for those businesses, just like you would any other business in the city. Um, but some of the speakers over the last few weeks and months have highlighted some of the challenges that they're facing uh, on the front lines in the neighborhood there. So uh, a temporary moratorium right now would allow city staff to um, continue finalizing that UDO amendment, um, view uh, the document with stakeholders like those citizen speakers who've come before the council and just make sure we've got the concerns that have been brought forward to all of you addressed in such a way that it satisfies uh, those stakeholders without retroactively um, telling them that they need to go back and address or amend something uh, after the fact that the council has perhaps updated that UDO code. Mm. You asked for six months. Do you think it's going to take that long to update everything? I, I would hope that we could um, move that along faster, but I wouldn't want to under uh, state how long that might take, and then we, we end up going belong. So I think that is a, an up to. Um, the, the, the UDO amendment um, at this point in time has been drafted. It's been presented to the um, Planning Commission with a recommendation of due pass. It's currently slated to have a first reading at the November 21st meeting and a second reading at the second. Um, but I, um, I believe you know the council has the ability to ask us to, to hold on that if we need to, just to make sure we get all of the citizen feedback that we need. Um, and then once this is passed, um, that we would ask the council to rescind that uh, action if um, we're satisfied prior to that six month period. I guess I, I don't know, I have a problem with the six months. It just seems like an awful long time. And um, my concern is if something good would come up, you know, we have this in place and there's no recourse from bill to prove or anything. I think I'll be voting no on this, but I understand the intent of it. That's all I have. Thank you. Any further discussion on 22-823? Mayor? Please. Um, Mr. City Manager, do, do we know how many short-term rentals we have in our city right now? Or is that something we need to, we can get later on? Um, staff's telling me it's about 25 or 30. 25 uh, or 30. Mm -hmm. And so when they're short-term rentals, are we taxing them at a hotel rate? Yes. So, yes. so there's revenue that Correct. comes off of these. Yes. Yes. Do we do we know how much revenue we generate off of this? The most recent information. I know the the council was copied on an email from one owner yesterday who stated that um, they're bringing in about eighteen thousand dollars a year off of their rentals. Of course. Those are um, receiving the 6.5% um, voter approved transient guest tax. Um, I'm not sure if that's on the high end or not, but that gives you an approximation of, of what we may see off of those. It might be helpful if we understand, you know, what, what those 25 or 30 or however many, just what the revenue base is for those. That, that helps us have a little more knowledge of what we're, what we're um, currently receiving off of it and, and then if we need to expand that or, or grow that with more or less or whatever we want to do. So if we could do that, that'd be helpful. Thank you. I, I think we can and we'll look to do that. Okay. Mr. Mayor. Please proceed. Thank you. Uh, to uh, Councilman Steinmeier's uh, point, I was also going to make the suggestion that uh, um, if you haven't already reviewed it, please review. Uh, Kirsten Connolly actually wrote a very great email who is also a business owner 
lives on the square and they own and operate several uh, Airbnbs. Um, it's very well written and very well stated. She would be here this evening, but she had other engagements to be at. Okay. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Madam City Clerk, uh, please call the roll. Yeah. Anybody give me a motion on this one? Uh, sorry, Mr. Mayor. I make a motion to approve okay. 22823. Second. second. All right. Got a motion and a second. Uh, Madam City Clerk, please call the roll on 22823. Councilmember Spears? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Stewart? No. Steinmeier? Yes. Hobart? Yes. Mayor Roland? Yes. 22A23 passes. That brings us to public hearings. And if you can proceed, uh, and this will open the public hearing. A public hearing for the application by Beth Hoberg requesting a special use permit to operate a bed and breakfast at 910 East Manor Road. New information only. Thank you, Mayor, members of the council. My name is Rick Arroyo, the Assistant Community Development Director here at the city. This special use permit was uh, considered by Planning Commission on September 27th of this year. Planning Commission did vote in favor of this special use permit. Uh, this property has an accessory garage that has a loft converted into a living space. The applicant plans to live in the main house. Uh, therefore, under our code, this application aligns with a bed and breakfast uh, requiring the special use permit. Um, I have no new information to provide. Any discussion or questions? No. Nope. I'll close the public hearing and then any discussion or questions. Mr. Mayor. Please proceed. Uh, <clears throat> my question is, we just, we just did a moratorium on short-term rentals. Does this fall into that or because it's a bed and breakfast, is it separate? Could you address that question to the city manager? So absolutely, Mr. Walker. I, I, if I could defer to the city attorney to clarify <laughs> that. <laughs> so the the moratorium that was just approved doesn't apply to any applications that have already been received or currently being processed. It prevents new applications from being accepted, but any that are already in, in the pipeline will still consider to be and, and be reviewed and processed accordingly. So including ones, anything on the agenda this evening. Thank you. Yep. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Madam City Clerk, please call the roll. Um, we'll need to read the bill first. Okay, go ahead. Bill number 22-100, an ordinance approving a special use permit to operate a bed and breakfast at 910 East Manor Road in Independence, Missouri. Second and final reading. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Madam City Clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Spears? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Stewart? Yes. Steinmeier? Yes. Hobart? Yes. Mayor Roland? Yes. This will open a public hearing. A public hearing for the application received from Crafts and Cocktails LLC for a consumption of intoxicating liquor license located at 17201 East US 40 Highway, Suite 115, full public hearing. Good evening, Mayor and members of the council. My name is Tom Scanell. I'm the Community Development Director. Uh, so Craft and Cocktails is a new business. It's located in the uh, Country Meadows Shopping Center along 40 Highway. Uh, essentially the southeast corner of uh, 40 Highway and, and Shrank. It's a uh, shopping center that has a variety of uh, different uses in, in their offices, restaurants, that sort of thing. Uh, so crafts and, and cocktails, it's uh, arts and crafts studio that will allow uh, patrons to bring in uh, adult beverages. Uh, this has been reviewed by, by staff uh, and we have nothing new to add. Right. And this is a full public hearing, so if there's any other further discussion from anyone. Hi, I'm Shelly Foster. I am the owner of my new business, Crafts and Cocktails. I am a resident of Independence, where I reside at Drum Farm Center for Children, where I'm a foster parent. Um, the crafts and cocktails have been widely received. It's sort of a um, spin to a paint and sip. So people would bring in their own food, their own alcoholic beverages. I would not 
provide any of that. So it's just a fun place to be. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Mayor. Uh, please proceed. Is it, Do you have a question? or? I just had a question. Yeah. Does that mean we can just come in and get a little tipsy and throw glitter all over each other? <laughs> no. It's not that kind of crafts? Well, we got plenty of glitter. <laughs> All right, I'm going to close this public hearing. <laughs> Council action is requested regarding the application received from Crafts and Cocktails LLC for a consumption of intoxicating liquor license located at 17201 East US 40 Highway, Suite 115. Any discussion? Seeing none, Madam City Clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Spheres. Yes. Perkins? Yes. Stewart? Yes. Steinmeier? Yes. Hobart? Yes. Mayor Rowland? Yes. This brings us to non ordinance items. Mm -hmm. This brings us to non ordinance items. Madam City Clerk, please proceed. Bill number 22-824, a resolution for approval of an agreement between the City of Independence, Missouri and the Independence Chamber of Commerce for the establishment and operation of the Independence Economic Development Partnership. Any discussion? Mr. Mayor. Please proceed. So um, several months ago, I think I started this by um, taking, by proposing some action um, at that time. Um, and, and at that time we asked for the um, Independence Economic Development Corporation and the chamber to make proposals for how they would help with uh, economic development here in Independence. Unfortunately, we only received um, the proposal from the chamber. I say unfortunately because I would have liked to have seen what the IEDC um, was proposing, but, um, but they have declined to make a proposal. So um, certainly we do need economic development and independence. And, um, and I've looked at this and, and I really like the resolution and the deliverables and some of the the proposed actions that are going to be taken. So um, I'm really um, pleased with what I'm seeing here. I just uh, am sad that we don't have the other alternative to take a look at as well. So that's all I have. Thank you. Anyone else? Other discussions on this item? I just have a question, Mr. Please Mayor. proceed. Um, Mr. City Manager, I was looking at the background. It says the city pays 170000 for the EDC. Where, where does that specifically come out of? Out of the electric utility so budget. So it's IPL that yes, pays sir. for this. Okay. How long have we done that? I have worked for the city for a, a decade, and it's been at least that long, and um, was looking at some historical budgets, and uh, the documents I was able to access went back 15 years, and it was at least through the, the last 15 years. Okay. Is there any plans to, to move that out of utilities uh, and back into the city for city oversight and, um, and, and budgeting? Uh, I've not had those conversations. Um, I certainly understand that um, um, that might, that's a desire for some, um, but we just, the competing resources in the general fund, we've not had that conversation yet, but it certainly doesn't preclude us from exploring that and making sure we're um, being rational and equitable in the way we compensate for that service. Yeah, just uh, it, just my concern being, you know, that in the IPL is supposed to be run in a business-like fashion separate from the city. If we're going to partner with that, I'd like to see what IPL gains from that versus what the city gains from that, or should it be cleaner and better to budget just from the city? Abs uh, yes, I, I, I would agree, and I think doing that we did that, as you recall, that cost allocation exercise. Um, that was something the utility advisory board had asked for for several years, and we now have a better handle on how that's um, compensated for. Um, I, I think you know, looking at some of these other special agreements bears um, going through that exercise as well. That'd be that'd be terrific. So, if I'm reading this correctly, because sometimes I look at it and I just get caught up in it, and so it's 170. It would be 171.40, and then the 10. So it's 320,000. No, sir. Okay. Um, so before, um, or, or I should say, presently, um, 
The city has um, contributed $170,000 to that entity, the Economic Development Council. An additional $10,000 was treated as a pass-through that went from the city to the Independence Economic Development Council and then was used for that organization to join the regional Kansas City Area Development Council, which is the entity that solicits all of the projects for the Kansas City metropolitan area. Under this proposal, the city's total contribution would be $140,000 inclusive of that $10,000 pass-through. Okay, okay, I'm glad I asked. Yeah, right. So, um, so Council Member Fears, are, are, are you wanting to see more from this before we vote on it, or are you content with the way it sits right now? No, I'm comfortable with the way it's 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 sitting. So, um, Mr. Mayor, one question, follow up, Please. City Manager, if I could. Um, so, just to make clear, make sure we're clear, we, since June, since we took the action in June, we've not made any payments to uh, IEDC. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Thank you. Any other further discussion, <laughs> Mr. Mayor? Please proceed. Very briefly, uh, <clears throat> and if I may address the city manager. Mr. City Manager, it's my understanding that this also moves us in the direction of the more common model for economic development uh, used not just regionally, but sort of throughout the country now. Is that right? That, that is correct. Um, as part of this um, research for this um, proposal, um, a number of uh, entities were looked at, frankly, um, throughout the Midwest, but specifically here within the Kansas City metropolitan region, that nine county area, uh, and this merged hybrid model is what our peers are operating off of. Very excited for it. Thank you, Council Member Fears. I'll be voting yes. Any further discussion? Uh, I just want to say I'm in favor of this also. Uh, what I really, really like about this, and for anybody who's listening tonight, this is important. It was truly where two entities came together and said this is the best practice for the City of Independence going forward. And I think that's very, very important that we have that kind of kumbaya moment in policy making. And that's what I really like about this. I know there's some things they needed to work out. There's some still details. But I'd really like it when, when people that have ideas from opposing viewpoints get together and then come to us and say, hey, we've worked out the details, and that way we don't have to resolve it. And it's going to be, in my opinion, much more efficient. Uh, we're not going to have this duplication that we've had uh, in the past. And with a lot of a lot of the board members who served on each were members of the Chamber of Commerce and members of the, the EDC. Why not merge them together and use their resources together in one united front? And so I like the idea a lot. Uh, with that being said, um, Madam City Clerk, uh, please call the roll. Council members Fierce? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Stewart? Yes. Steinmeier? Yes. Hobart? Yes. Mayor Roland? Yes. That brings us to ordinances, and Madam City Clerk, please proceed. Bill number 22-099, an ordinance authorizing the city manager to accept a grant from Mid-America Regional Council in the amount of $129,000 for the city's senior adult nutrition site program for fiscal year 2022-2023 and execute the amendment community center services agreement, making the necessary appropriations, authorizing future change orders for additional funding and or time extensions, and authorizing certain future appropriations. Second and final reading. Okay, any further discussion? Seeing none, Madam City Clerk, please call the roll. Council Member Spheres? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Stewart? Yes. Steinmeier? Yes. Hobart? Yes. Mayor Rowland? Yes. That brings us to the next ordinance item. Please proceed. Bill number 22-101, an ordinance authorizing and directing the city manager to execute a certain contract for sale of real estate in exchange for payment of $23,205 for land designated as city surplus property, 12820 East 43rd Terrace South, and to do all the things necessary to consummate said sale. Second and final reading. Do we hear any discussion? Do we hear any discussion? Seeing none, Madam City Clerk, please call the roll. Council Members Fierce? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Stewart? Yes. Steinmeier? Yes. Hobart? Yes. Mayor Rowland? Yes. And the item passed. Uh, Madam City Clerk, 22508, please. Bill number 22-508, an ordinance approving a final plat for Newtown at Harmony, Plat 3 in Independence, Missouri. Second and final reading. Any discussion? 
Seeing none, Madam City Clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Spears? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Stewart? Yes. Steinmeier? Yes. Hobart? Yes. Mayor Rowland? Yes. And 22-508 passed. Uh, Madam City Clerk, please proceed. Bill number 22-509, an ordinance approving a final plat for Newtown at Harmony, Plat 4 in Independence, Missouri. Second and final reading. Any discussion? Seeing none, Madam City Clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Spears? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Stewart? Yes. Steinmeier? Yes. Hobart? Yes. Mayor Rowland? Yes. And 22-509 passed. Uh, that brings us to first readings. Bill number 22-102, an ordinance authorizing the purchase of two new Spartan custom four-door pumper fire trucks from Preci Precision Industries, Inc. for $1,440,876.01 and making the necessary appropriations. Bill number 22-103, an ordinance approving a special use permit to operate a body arts services business at 116 West US 24 Highway in Independence, Missouri. That brings us to Councilmember comments. Uh, Councilmember Stewart? Nothing tonight, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Perkins? Nothing tonight, Mayor. Thank you. Nothing for me tonight either, Mayor. Wow. You guys got the memo. Thank you. However, this person will not. Councilmember Hobart? <laughs> memo? Yeah. What memo? <laughs> <clears throat> Last Saturday, um, <clears throat> we had a, a short ceremony honoring Karen <coughs> Marie DeLucci, DeLucy. Um, the city has planted a redbud tree with some uh, a nice little edging and a and a plaque at the Vale Mansion, which Karen absolutely loved. Her daughter was there and told some funny stories, and her husband and her son. And uh, you know, it was it was a really short but a very nice, nice ceremony. Uh, it was cold and windy and rainy, and our mayor made the decision to move outside anyway. And as we all started to talk and gather, uh, the clouds cleared, and it it got sunny out um, so I'm sure she heard us and probably thought it was too much um, but anytime you go now to the Vale Mansion when you <laughs> we love you Shirley <laughs> so uh, Charlotte our, our amazing arborist, tree person, planting person who absolutely treats all the city property like her own backyard. Uh, she planted Karen's redbud right at the entrance to the parking lot. And she did that specifically so that Karen's tree would be the first thing you see when you get there and the last thing you see when you leave. So um, if you ever miss Karen, Stop by and see your tree. Thank you. Council member? Nothing to know. Okay, very good. Um, with that, I just want to say congratulations to Bridget McCandless for your election last night. Looking forward to serving with you. You'll be a great member of this body, and we're looking to use your services to further the city forward. So thank you for your willingness to come forward and do that. Um, with that, I will call this meeting adjourned.